you and we appreciate you and God loves you. No matter what's going on, I want you to know that God loves you. And no matter what other situation you're going through, God is bigger. God is bigger than the coronavirus. God is bigger than anything. Amen. Praise God. Now, we're going to partake of our communion. This bread represent the body of Jesus that was broken for us. You said in your word, Father, do this as often as you would. And we now take this time to partake of this bread. Let us now commune together. This cup represent the blood of Jesus. That by the blood of Jesus, we have been redeemed from the curse of the Lord. That by the blood of Jesus, we have been declared righteous. That by the blood of Jesus, we have a blood bought right to have our prayers answered. That by the blood of Jesus, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb the word of our testimony. That by the blood of Jesus, we overcome every opposition that come our way in the name of Jesus. That by the blood, we can present our body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service of our reasonable worship. And by the blood, we have a blood bought right to have the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Holy Spirit, we say you are welcome here today. We say have your way. As we partake of this communion, let us now commune together. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for your word. We give you the glory, give you honor and praise. We thank you, Father God, this word will be sown on good ground and it will bear fruits in the hearts of the people. And I give you glory, give you honor and praise. Right now, Heavenly Father, as that you anoint the ears of the hear to hear what the Spirit of God will have to say. I do, Father, ask you today that each one here will hear this word accurately and they will hear it precisely and they will not just be hearers of what they hear today, but they will go out and be doers of it. To realize, Heavenly Father, the doers to get the results and we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise and all the admiration for that in Jesus' name. Right now, Heavenly Father, I thank you. I have that fresh anointing to minister your word. I thank you, Father God, the anointing is on your word. I thank you, Father God, your word is what is powerful. Your word is what produces results in people's lives. And I give you glory and honor and praise. And I do, Father, ask you that I will speak this word accurately and I will speak it precisely. And I will speak it boldly and with authority. Realize that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And I realize, Heavenly Father, the joy of the Lord is my strength and is the strength of my life. I pray it now, Father God, in this message, all of you and none of me, right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you that revelation knowledge shall flow freely today, uninterrupted, unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. I thank you, Father, your worship not return to you void, but it shall accomplish as that it would do. Also, Father God, thank you. You are the Lord, thy God, that cannot lie. And you confirm your word with signs following. And therefore, I declare the sign shall follow in Jesus name. Amen. We have been talking about, are you living under the correct covenant? With everything that's going on now, I'm going to share some things with you. Whether you know it or not, the Bible talks about us rightly dividing the word of truth, which the body of Christ is wrongly dividing it. And eventually I'm going to get into it and you keep tuning in. We're going to get into something. How do I know whether I'm rightly dividing the word of truth or I'm wrongly dividing? There's a formula in the Bible. And I'm not going to give it to you today. I want you to keep tuning in every week. And maybe that'll be the one I share it with you. That's a trick. Yes, it is. <laughs> Amen. But realize, if you're living under the wrong covenant, you're subject to things that are in that covenant. Like the Mosaic law. You're subject to that law if you're going to follow that law. And nobody ever has fulfilled the law except Jesus Christ. Amen? So now, you want to analyze so many Christians today. What is true under the Old Testament was true for that time. But it's no longer truth. If something in the new overrides that. And what we got going on in Christianity, we got a mix. A mix of something that believers don't even know what's going on. Well, this is, this is what grandma heard. You, let me say something to you. Grandma was sincere. Her pastor was sincere. But they didn't know. 
Amen? See, see, I, I have a problem. If people, if people want to come, you know, they, they want to try to correct you. But then they don't want to, they don't want to listen to no other word. What you say, they'll come up with one scripture. They want to hold on. But my Bible says this. Yeah, your Bible said that. But is it correct or is it under the right covenant? Is it rightly divided or is it wrong divided? And that's what the Holy Spirit is for. To help you rightly divide the word of truth. See, some stuff, it's not coming from the Holy Spirit. And Job, for instance, you know, Job prayed about having a mediator. We got a mediator, Jesus Christ. Between, the Bible said no man comes to the Father except by the Son. You, you, you can't go to the Father without Jesus. The only way you're going to get to the Father is to make Jesus Christ as Lord. God, God don't talk to you. Now, he might do some things in his life to, to try to help you along, but you know what? God does not listen to sinners' prayers. No more. He'll listen to it if they cry out to be saved. Yes. But they have no right to approach God strong. We approach it strong without a sense of guilt. We can approach it boldly by the blood. You got to see, 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 the Old Testament, they, 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 they weren't children of God. They were servants. Now, we serve God, but we're sons of God and daughters of God. That's who we are. And see, the biggest problem in the body of Christ, nobody knows who they are. Take it on scriptures that are not even related to them. My righteousness is filthy, dirty rags. That is an insult to Almighty God. Israel righteous was as dirty rags. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's who you are. And you're going to turn around and call it my righteousness of dirty rags? What is in the Bible? Yes, in the Bible. That was true for that dispensation of time. It's not true anymore. Because Jesus came that you might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's who you are. Now, you want to go around and keep on thinking that your righteousness is a dirty rag? Keep your dirty rags to yourself. Amen. He's just so hard. You say, in these last days, we need it hard. Everybody looking for something to tickle their ears. Yes, they want to dance. I want to dance. I got ants in my pants and I want to dance. Don't want to hear no word. Don't want to open the Bible up enough. You, know, get, you, get, you get, get people, I heard this a minute, you give too much word, word in the people, they might overdose. Overdose me. Yeah. This is the kind of stuff Christians are saying. Now, let's get into what I want to get into. I'm going to give you a review. A covenant is an agreement between two parties, a legal contract that is irrevocable agreement. There's the covenant of the law and the covenant of grace. Which covenant are you going to live under? The covenant of grace or the covenant of law? I need to say this in the middle of this. Matthew is not the beginning of the New Testament. Well, in my Bible it said, well, they put the page in there, but that's not the beginning. A testament cannot begin until the testor dies. And Jesus hadn't died yet. Hello? So you can't call that new. As a matter of fact, Jesus did not come and walk the earth under the new covenant. He came to walk the earth under the old covenant. Although he said some things about the new covenant, but he did not walk the earth under the new covenant. How are you going to walk on something the new when the covenant hadn't been enforced yet? But see, people tell you, we're, we're in the new covenant. Matthew's the new covenant. No, Matthew's not the new covenant. Neither is Mark, neither is Luke, neither is John. I actually begin in Acts. See, we've got to change this religious doctrines. And you know what? That's my assignment from the Holy Spirit to do it. Some people are not going to like it. I'm not, I'm not here for popularity. Well, what, what about it? if people leave the church? Go, see you later. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to do what God wants me to do. 
Not going to tickle your ears so, so you be satisfied with your religion. Amen. The law is based on conditions. Grace is an unconditional covenant. Let me see something. The law was given to bring out man's sin. The law is given to bring out your sin so you, so you know sin. Grace was given to take, take your sin away. You, you, you go to a church, and, and, and I was involved with trying to help a church one time, and, well, you know, we got to get back to preaching sin. What for? There's nothing the Bible talk about preaching sin. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul was a big sinner. Until he got Jesus, he was killing off the church. Moses was a big sinner. And David was definitely a trip. <laughs> Amen. Now, the Lord gives death, the new covenant gives life. Now, like I said before, there's a covenant of the law and a covenant of grace. The covenant of the law is a conditional covenant. The covenant of grace is unconditional. Amen. The law kills, but grace gives life. Amen. The covenant of the law is about man faithfulness. The covenant of grace is about Jesus faithfulness, about what Jesus has finished, what Jesus has done. Most, most, most churches don't even realize when Jesus died on that cross, when he said it is finished, they don't even realize what was finished. Realize the old covenant was finished. He took care of it. It's a done deal. And yet, you as a believer, you still want to walk in that. Because grandma did it. And your mommy did it. And my mommy got to be right. Mommies and daddies not always right. They're sincere. Yes. I know of a situation people have, have told their Totally, should I say, kids' parents have told them about tongues and, and many situations, told them about tongues and their tongues, something wrong with tongues. Ain't nothing wrong with tongues. The Holy Spirit, something wrong with the Holy Spirit. Nothing wrong with the Holy Spirit. And Christians are scared of it. And that's because some people have been stupid with it. You know, you know, you, 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 you don't go on your job and you have a challenge and you start speaking loud on your job in tongues. They don't think you're a nut. Now, in this format, it's a different format. But job, they're, they're not going to understand that. Now, and the Bible said, you know, we, we got to get an understanding of whatever we're doing. Now, that, mean, that doesn't mean you can't pray quietly to yourself. You don't have to be loud with tongues all the time. D do do y'all know that? Some people got to think to show, show how powerful their tongues is and just as mean as they want to be. Amen. Amen. Now, the Lord, the Lord shines light on sin. Grace shines the perfection of God's son. The law of the covenant, it was given to increase sin in your life. I mean, we're going to cover that today, hopefully. The covenant of grace is given to make men holy. The law brings guilt and condemnation. That's what the law does. Make you feel guilty. You didn't do this right. So now because you didn't do this right, you messed up. Now God's holding back something from you. That's when, that, you kept this church, that's when you didn't get blessed, brother. Because you fornicated last night. You hadn't fornicated, you would have had that blessed. Baloney. Now watch this. Condemnation it's the condemnation and the guilt that blocks things up, not the sin. Oh, yeah. Now, Jesus even talked about, it. do you know why Jesus overcome every temptation? Because he believed that the Holy Spirit in him was big enough to take care of all that. 
But it's the confidence. The Bible talks about in John. It says, it says about your confidence. Story. Your heart condemns you not. Didn't you have confidence? So what Satan do? He going he'll trick you into sinning and then condemn you. So guess what? You don't have confidence. He comes to rob your confidence, and he rob your confidence. That's robbing you of your faith. It's not the sin, but we so focus on the sin. I know, I know I sin a little bit, but she ought to be saying with herself. She, 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 she do a lot more sin than I. And if I don't get to heaven, I know she ain't. You self-righteous nut. That's what you're doing. You, you, you're just, you ain't called to do that. You're called to judge yourself, not other people. And my, my personal feeling in the body class in these days, we can heard enough of hooping and howling and groaning. And I, and I thank God for people that, that minister the word and they give some scriptures. But let me tell you something, man, we, we, we need to get this thing now. We, we, we need it more than ever what's going on. And you know what's going on? Oh, you get that one, Lord. OK. I, I, yes. Yes, sir. OK. How many have heard God is in control? No, he's not. God is not in control of this earth. This earth was, authority was given to Adam, and Adam gave it up to Satan. And Jesus came and took it back, and he gave us the authority in the earth. He said, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. And our Christians today, they're not speaking the word. They're speaking everything the news media tell them, and they let it come out of their mouth. Corona will be back soon. And you know, you start agreeing with that stuff, guess what happened? He, he, the, the Satan got Christians in agreement with the world. And whether you know it or not, you're going against God. Well, Pastor, we got to use wisdom. Are you talking about the wisdom of God or the wisdom of the devil? There's two. The wisdom of God is fear. Now watch this. The wisdom of God is fear. Not fear. The wisdom of the devil is fear. The wisdom of God is faith and believe that I'm a, I overcome every opposition that come my way. I overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. Amen. Amen. Do you realize Paul was that viper that bit him? He was supposed to die. I know a situation, a man went into another country and they had infested, dangerous mosquitoes to kill you. And they just flew all around and touch him. But see, you guess what? Our religion stops some of those things from happening. Because the Bible said the religion, religion or tradition of men, guess what it does? It makes the word of God of no effect. And that's where we're at right now. We got too much religion and not enough relationship with Almighty God. Amen. 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 I get that. You know, I'm not, I'm not in a hurry with this, you know. You might hear some things you heard before. <laughs> I said the covenant of, of the covenant of the Lord was given to increase sin in your life. That's what it does. The covenant of grace is given to make men holy. The Lord brings guilt and condemnation. Hello. And see, in, see in, in the Old Testament, they had to sacrifice animals for their sin. But we have the one time sacrifice Jesus. Amen. Now look at 1 Corinthians 2, chapter 2, verse 9. You're already there. Now watch this. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm blessed. But as it is written, eyes have not seen, nor, it, nor ears heard, Neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love them. Now notice this. The Holy Spirit just showed me something there. Guess what? What God hath prepared for you must enter into your spirit and enter into your mind. Mm. So God has already prepared things for you to walk in success. See, here's the problem. We just... We, we're not corresponding to what God says he's already done. See, see, let me, see, there's a difference in sharing the word, talking about God and knowing God. 
See, I could talk about a person and I could say something about a person and not really know that person. You could talk about somebody could say something about it, and you wind up talking about it, and you don't even know what that's the real story. That's when you need to keep your mouth off of people. You're supposed to be thinking the best of every person. Amen. That includes all your leaders in authority. No matter who they are. Your mayor, your congressman, your senator, your president, all of them. Next, next verse. Is there another verse after that? What's that after that? Verse 10. We're going down to 14. That's because this has been our foundation. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. Not by the law. He revealed them by his spirit. Now what is that? The spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit, both of them the Holy Spirit, searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Everybody said the word is deep. See, if you get tired, you get tired and you, 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 don't, you don't feel like you, you so tired you don't want to do no word no more. What else are you putting in you? What's going in you that's contrary to the word? What are you spending most of your time with? Is it watching soap operas all the time? I mean, I was hooked on those things. Way back, you know. All my children. One life to live. Okay? And then, then I sneaked over in the general hospital. You see? And, and whether you know it or not, whatever goes through your ear gates and eye gates is going to affect your life. Either you're going to allow the word to affect your life or you're going to allow the world to affect your life. See, understand this, ladies and gentlemen. We're, we're, we're not supposed to operate totally by what you call human methods. And I'm going to say it to you like this. As long as the human method is not out of line with the word, it's okay. Amen. Verse 11. But what man knoweth the things of a man's other man, save the spirit of man which is where in him? Now I need to say this for those watching my internet. You are a spirit, you possess a soul, and you live inside a physical body. The real you is the spirit man, not the body. Save the spirit of man which is in him, even so the things of God knoweth no natural man. See, the natural man don't know the things of God. But what? But the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God. Now, you, what do you know? It? Do you realize that you know all? You know all? You want to know why you know all? Because you got the one that know all in you. And when you need to something, you need to know something, he'll let you know. Anything I I ask the Holy Spirit, he'll let me, he, he lets me know. You got to depend on the greater one that lives on the inside of you. We, the church treats the Holy Spirit like he's Casper the friendly ghost or something. Verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. Now that tells you there is a spirit of the world which is Satan's spirit. His demons and his forces operate by the spirit of the world. But we operate, but the spirit, which is of God, we operate. So we didn't receive. See, when you got saved, you had the spirit of the world. But when you got born again, you got the spirit of God. But the spirit, which is of God, that we might know that we might do what? We might know the things are freely given to unto us. So that tells me that God has already given us some things. And we know them by the spirit. Of God that's on the inside of us. How are we going to know him? By the spirit on the inside that God has already given us everything. Now watch this, ladies and gentlemen. Watch this. Jesus made a statement. And they couldn't understand what he's saying. My words are spirit and my words are life. Now whether you know it or not, watch this very careful. You can talk about the word. You can say the word. But you know it's not spiritual to you. 
is just some words on a page. To a believer, it's life, it's spiritual food and nourishment for your spirit being. And the believer haven't caught about it. They think, I, I just go to church, jump up and down, stop, and get, a, get a few scriptures, choir sing a song. Okay, I'm all right. I did my duty. I'm all right now. Let me go get some Johnny Walker Red. I'm okay now. I went to church. What did you get? Amen. Hallelujah. Next verse. I almost got another half hour review, huh? That's all right. What things also we, now watch this. He said he's given us these things. Which things also we do what? We speak. God says, by his stripes, I'm healed. I speak it. God said he wish above all things that thou shalt prosper and be in good health. I say, I'm a prosperous man. The Bible says Joseph was a prosperous man. Why was he proud? Because God was with him. Ladies and gentlemen, God living on the inside of you in the form of the Holy Spirit is with you now. So you're a prosperous man. And you got to start saying you're prosperous. See, rich with God is different than rich in the world. See, see, you need, that, that's when you need to be in a church that's going to teach you how to rightly divide this word by the Holy Spirit. You need somebody anointed to teach you these things. That's when I, 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 can't, I can't get up and just give you one message on Sunday. It's in the series all the time. Because I, I have to keep you here all afternoon to finish the whole thing. And some people go to sleep on 20, in 20 minutes. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man wisdom teach. In other words, he said, not in words which man's wisdom teach. Man wisdom said the corona come back. I said it ain't coming back in Jesus' name. I, I, I'm not going to agree with the world. And see, if enough Christians had the right words out there and start agreeing, we can have a great effect on it. God's not giving you a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. Which things also we speak not in words which man wisdom teach, but which who? The Holy Ghost teaches. Who teaches? The Holy Ghost is going to teach you how to do everything. That's the Holy Spirit saying thing. He's going to teach you how to do everything. What is he going to do? He's going to compare spiritual things with spiritual things. Notice he's not going to compare natural things to spiritual things. He's comparing spiritual spirit. He's comparing what's in your spirit to the word of God. That's what he's comparing. Verse 14. And the church as a whole, they have crippled Christians. Now, I'm not talking about the sincerity of the men. They're sincere. But see, I, I remember a minister, I know he said a long time, he said, you can be sincere, but you can be sincerely wrong. But the natural man, talk about your natural man, receive not the things of the Spirit of God. They don't, the man, natural man don't receive them. But they are foolish under him. Neither can he know them. Why? Because they are spiritually Discern. See, what, what, what you're getting to do here today, it's being spiritually discerned coming out of me and the Holy Spirit is doing that, not me. I might be a little smart, but not that smart. Amen. Praise God. And let's go on to what we want to get in today. Second Corinthians, third chapter. No, don't go to that. Go to Deuteronomy 28, 1. And I want to just compare this. I want, I want to get this law thing out of your system. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. Now, see, this is law. What I just read to you is the new. This is law. And it shall come to pass, if, 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 Thou shalt hearken diligently to the Lord's voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Now, there's 618 of them. And you did all 618, which you did, you probably didn't do all the 10. Hmm? 
Now watch. The next verse 2. If you do all that, if you do them all, all. Verse 2. All these blessings shall come on thee, and they're going to overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy. Notice the conditions of the ear. Now go down to verse 15. Let's see what you, if you don't do it. <laughs> and it shall come to pass if thou sh will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, all these curses shall come upon thee and they're going to overtake you. So that means if you didn't do all 613, the curse is going to overtake you. So you go ahead and follow the law here. Curse, 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 curse. Mama cuss, curse. Daddy curse. Cousins curse. Your frog curse and your dogs curse. As a result, because you didn't do it because you want to follow that. You think you can do it. And only one did it to Jesus. And see, let me, let me show you how something like this robbed your confidence. So now you believe in God for something, and what first thing Satan is going to do, you didn't get it because you didn't do that. You didn't did it, did get it now because you, somebody got on your last nerve and you cussed them out. You didn't get it. Had you not cussed them out, maybe you would have got it. Have nothing to do with nothing. So now, like I told you, Satan brings the guilt and condemnation. Now you're all the guilt and you're feeling bad. Now he robs your confidence. So now when he robs your confidence, now you're not corresponding to what God said. You need to turn around and say, hey, I messed up. I blew it. Father, I thank you already for forgiving me. And I received the forgiveness you already bought. And thank you for it. And, and then go ahead and speak the word. That's how you correspond. Amen. Y'all okay? Romans 5. Verse 20. Moreover, the law entered that the office might abound. But where sin abound, what happened? Grace did much more abound. So the solution, grace is designed to take care of sin. Jesus Christ is the person of grace. And you got, you got ministers that are going around calling people that minister grace. It's a false gospel. You don't even know what the gospel is. You didn't even realize that the word gospel was really talking about grace. And Jesus Christ is the person of grace. And Jesus Christ came to Paul and said, <laughs> look at this is very careful. This is some Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ, when Paul was going through something, Jesus didn't say, I'm sufficient, Paul. He said, my grace. My grace. So now, you're going to say the grace message is false? And Jesus says it's my grace? Maybe you need to look at are you really saved? Sometimes you got to get a little bit into that jump. You know, I want to read the Amplified to that, verse 20. But then the law came in only to expand and increase the trespassing, make it more apparent and exciting opposition. Wherein increase and abound grace, God's unmerited favor, favor has surpassed it and increased the more and more superbound, bounded rather. 
So now, if you still wanted to follow the law, just turn me off and go eat some cheese. Galatians 3, verse 19. Oh, yeah. We're doing all right back there today? Good. Makes me happy. Galatians 3.19. Wherefore then served the law, it was added. Why was the law added? It was added because of transgression. Till the seed should come. Who's the seed? Jesus Christ. The law was added till he could, till he could come and fulfill it. When then to serve the law, it was added because of transgression till the seed should come to whom the promise was made to Jesus. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Jesus Christ himself, he's a mediator. Wow. Mm. You all okay? Yeah. Now you've been hearing all along that sin increases sin increases 1 Corinthians 15 verse 56 hallelujah the sting of death is sin the sting of death is what sin and the strength of sin is what? Is the law. So law, the law strengthens sin. The law makes you sin. That's why so many people won't come to church now because you know what? They think God is, God is putting something on them because they messed up. And you don't not realize you're putting it on yourself. Because God is loving. I don't care whether you're smoking marijuana. I don't care you, 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 you're drinking any kind of liquor. Whatever you're drinking. God still loves you. He'll love you exactly where you are right now. And he's here. He's here to clean you up and make you better. You know what I said to you? He's here to clean you up and make you better. That's what he's designed to do. Amen. Praise God. Now, so the sting of sin, the, the, the sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. Amen. Go to the next verse. Romans 3.20. Romans 3.20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified or declared righteous in his sight. Remember I said earlier about filthy righteousness? That's why it's filthy. Hello? Because it can't be justified by the law. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. By the law is the knowledge of sin. By the law is the knowledge of sin. It's the knowledge of sin. That's all, that's all the law is going to do is give you knowledge of sin. The law is not going to help you with your sin. Knowing the Ten Commandments is not going to help you with your sin. When I was in school, I was young and I went to church. They had us recite the Ten Commandments. Some way or another, I lost them. That's not what's going to stop you from sinning. As a matter of fact, it will increase sin in your life because you're trying to do it. And then when you messed up, all of a sudden, you, now you give up because you think, I can't do them. Just attend. And then we get older. Christians, they want to act like they're doing them all. That's a hypocrite. That's how the Pharisees act. 
when they brought that woman. We caught this woman in the very act of sin. Now they brought the woman. Where was the man? It takes two to tangle. Okay? And Jesus said, he that without sin, in those days you're supposed to be stoned. And Jesus said, he without sin cast the first stone. And they, they, they could not do it because they had sin in their lives themselves. And probably one of the ones that brought, brought, brought them is probably involved in it. Amen. Y'all all right. Romans 3.20. Do you have Romans 3.31 there? Okay, good. Three thirty one. But we but we didn't make void the law through faith. God to did. Yea, we established the law. Now here, here this, this is something that somebody always trying to use. You're trying to void the law. Uh uh. We're not voiding the law. It comes, it comes through faith. You understand? We correspond by faith. We establish it by faith. We establish that Jesus already fulfilled the law, so it's established. People say, oh, you're trying to throw it. No, we're not throwing away the law because it's already, it's established. Jesus already took care of it. We're not throwing it away. It's a done deal. We're not throwing it away. We just don't follow it no more because we're not under the law. We're under grace. Amen. Yeah. I want to read that in the message translation. I'm sorry, not the message for it. I just read what? I'm going to go to Amplify first. Next. Go to Amplify now. The same verse. 331, Amplified. Do we then by this faith make the law of no effect or overthrow it or make it dead, a dead letter? Certainly not. On the contrary, we confirm and establish and uphold the law. Well, how are we going to uphold the law? We're going to uphold the law by faith. And we have the Holy Spirit, so therefore we don't need it now. He's my God. See, they didn't have the Holy Spirit. Israel did not have the Holy Spirit. He would come and overshadow them and leave. He, he, he didn't live on it. See, God could not live on the inside of them because Satan was their God. Mm-hmm. Spiritually. Message translation. Uh-oh. But by shifting our focus from what we do to what God does, now no. We shift our focus of what we do, but we do what God does. We, see, the New Testament church do what God does. The Bible said, be ye followers of God's dear church. We do what God does. We don't do what we do. We do what God does. Whatever God does, we do it. He said, be followers of God. One, one translation would be, imitate God. Copy him. But by shifting our focus from what we do to what God does, then we can, then we can cancel all our careful keepings of the rules and the way God commanded. Not at all. What happened, in fact, is that by putting that entire way of life in its proper place, we confirm. See, there's a proper place for the law. And the proper place was it with Israel, for the Jews. It's not really for us. The Bible says the spirit of life in Christ have made me free from the law of what? Sin and death. Would you agree when you're free from something, don't you think you must have been in slavery? Because you're free. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Da, 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 da. Um, Galatians 2, verse 16.
knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law or declared righteous by the law. Or by, but what? But by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified or declared righteous by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified or declared righteous in his sight. Not by the law. The Lord's not going to do nothing for you, baby. The Lord can't get you saved. Hmm. You can know the law. You can know the law, and you can, you can probably might, you can do all the commandments. I'm going to say this to you. And if you did do all 613, you're still going to hell. But they know nobody's going to do it. So you're going to miss one. At least. Probably miss a lot more of them. So a man's not going to hell, to heaven, because he does the law. Man's going to heaven because he accepts Jesus, the one that fulfilled the law. Mm. Amen. Verse 21. Same chapter. I think that's the last scripture, right? Mm -hmm. He says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. I'll say it again. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in in vain. Think about it a minute. He's dead in vain. So it didn't come by the law. By grace or what? You say through what? Through what? Through faith. By grace are you saved through faith. That's how it came, ladies and gentlemen. That's how it came. And see, you you you, you want to believe. Let me say this to you. You want to do that in law? Okay. God's not caught up in what day you worship him. And there's nothing wrong if you want to worship on Saturday. You want to worship on Tuesday. You should have a right relationship. You're not going to get no extra benefits because you serve God on Saturday. Jesus said, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. And the Bible said, let no man judge you in the Sabbath day. We had a guy, man, he wanted, I mean, he, he loved the word, he loved the man, but he wanted to throw it all away because of the law, because of the day. Because we didn't do it on a Saturday. We should change our service to Saturday. I'll come, I, I, I would definitely stay here. Because he hung up on a day. That, a day is not going make to you, make you holy. You're holy because, because you accepted Jesus as your personal Christ. The Bible says, be holy as I'm holy. You're holy. So you got to see yourself as holy. See, understand, when you see yourself what God says about you, you will wind up becoming that. But Satan and his adversary will try to make you think Whatever's going on in your physical human method is you. That's not you. Just the house you live, live in. The person that dies in that coffin, that's not them in the coffin. It's the house they live in. And sure, I have compassion when people die, yes. And here's a good one. And funerals, I see people do this sometimes. We pray that God would take them into heaven now, over the body. Either they're there or they're not. <laughs> if they ain't there, by the time you got to that funeral and prayed, Reverend, they ain't going. They ain't going. <laughs> See, see, see the religious hocus pocus we, the devil got people doing. And one thing I pray if I, I do so, I, I, I hear people pray this. Um, pray, the Lord, uh, um, God received them up in heaven. My, my prayer is simply this: I changed it. My prayer is, Father, I thank you. But I know they're born in that you've already seen my brother already in heaven, and I thank you. He's there. 
See the difference of what you're saying? You're corresponding to what God has done, not what you want God to do now. If they accept the Christ, it's already a done deal. Amen. I see, I changed some of this stuff. No wonder folks in the world don't want to come. Man, with Christians, they look stupid. But you meet somebody and you start telling them who you are in Christ Jesus. You start telling them about your church. Who are, oh man, we don't believe that Jesus already done and paid the price for it. He's going through something with his wife. Oh man, you know what? I got a good marriage because Jesus took care of it. It wasn't for Jesus. I went. Man, start telling people what God do in your life. It wasn't for this. Man, it just happened to me in my life. And you're going through a situation in your marriage. Speak the word over it. And when you get into a marriage, everything ain't always right. Hello. Sometimes we think everything's going to be peaches and green. Honeymoon, everything. It's going to be every day. I, I know a situation, guy. I married him. And I, I, I really didn't want him, but I just did it as a friend. Because he's going to get married anyway, so. And he said, man, boy, she said, we just didn't want to be. Boy, they went on a honeymoon. And he got back and she said to him, you fixed my D breakfast. Mm. Oh, yeah. He said, man, like the exorcist is on the scene. <laughs> he said, scared him. Oh, yeah. He said, it was almost like she became a man. Tell him what to do. <laughs> so, in situation you get in a marriage, first of all, you ought to be praying the Ephesians prayer to pray the eyes of your wife understand to become further in the light. That God will fill them with the knowledge that will all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That they're rooted and grounded in love, maybe comprehend with all the saints, what the breath and length and That's what God says about them. So you're supposed to be praying that. You're supposed to be declaring that over the life. I declare. That the eyes and understand to become further in the light. I declare that rooted and grounded in love. When are we going to learn how to talk the word? We talk everything else but the word. That's what Chris is doing. And you watching, you probably talking. But you know something? God has a plan for, he already prearranged your life that you're supposed to live the good life. Not, see, the, see, see the world want to trick you into thinking Having a good life is doing that. That's not the good life because the number of people, even stars, have the good life. They die early, die of this suicide, everything else. It ain't, it ain't what it, money. let me tell you something. Money, there's nothing wrong. God wants you to have money. He don't want you to be poor. But when money got you, money will take you where you don't want to go. Because that's an anointing the devil uses money. And the Bible didn't say money was evil. It said the love of the money, the moral relationship with money. See, you can be poor, poor as you want to be, and you can still love money. Just because people got money don't mean they love money. Hello! See? See, God wants you to prosper so you can help other people. See, you can't help nobody being poor. And you look into the world and the government to do everything for you. Whether they do this or they don't. You better look to God. System of operation. Amen. We want you to know we love you so very much and God loves you. Now I'm going to do something right now. You could be sitting here in this message. Maybe you ain't been going to church. Maybe. Maybe. Um, you've been going to church. You just got frustrated with church. Because you got frustrated due to the wrong information. You might be sitting there hopeless. There's no hope for me. You could be sitting there saying, God don't love me. And I'm here to tell you, yes, he does. He sent Jesus. And if you already accepted Jesus, Satan played a game on you. He put a lot of guilt and condemnation. And you might have saw some things in the church that's not right. And you just knew they wasn't right. You knew they wasn't right. And I want to give you the opportunity now to get that situation corrected. I'm going to give you the opportunity to make Jesus your personal Lord and say, you because the pastor, I messed up. I'm going to give you the opportunity right now. And if you're not born again, but you believe Jesus is the Son of God, repeat this. Father God, Father God, I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that he died for me. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I make you Lord of my life. 
and Jesus, you are now my Lord and Savior. Whether you know it or that, you just got born again. The angels in heaven are rejoicing over you. Now, to get you started, I want you to click on Gift of God's Love, some information you can read, and there's also some videos that you can watch. I encourage you to keep watching. And you, if you want to come visit at any time, we're here every Sunday morning at 8 o'clock, 380 Broad Street, Newark, New Jersey. Every Sunday morning, you're welcome. Now, you could be sitting there also, you're already born again. But say, Pastor, I want to re re rededicate my life to the Lord. I messed up, but I want to rededicate my life to the Lord. And if you want to do that now, I'll make it very simple for you. Repeat this. Say, Father God, I blew it. I messed up. But you already forgiven me. And I, I received the forgiveness you already provided. In Jesus' name, amen. It's just that simple. Now, give you another channel. If you desire to be filled with the Spirit, evidence of speaking in tongue, tongues, there's some teaching on that. You can probably go to one of my sites, or you're welcome to come here. We'd be happy to minister to you and fill with the Spirit, evidence of speaking in tongues. That's a gift every believer ought to have. Another thing I want to do. If you're here in the Lord and press upon your heart to become a member, and you watch it by internet, if you desire to become an electronic member, you're welcome. We'll take you. And you right now, you can't get out of your home right now, you're welcome to become a member. Just, just email us to, uh, you go on our website, hit contact, and let us know, and we'll call you on the phone and tell you what you got to do to prepare you. We got we a way to prepare you electronically, too. Ain't nothing stopping. Corona don't stop nothing here. We over Corona. Amen. See, that's, that's the kind of attitude you got to have. You know, scared, I mean, scared a piece of tissue going to jump up in the, off the ground. And get, I mean, please. But anyway, I want you to know God loves you. And we love you. And right now, please keep tuning in. Amen. Praise God. Now, we're going to give you the opportunity to sow seed into God's kingdom. The Bible said, give, and it shall be given to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and run off shall men give in your bosom. And you're watching my internet now. It's on the screen right there. You just go to www.faithlove.org or you can mail it to P.O. Box 200491, Newark, New Jersey, 07102. Or you can text it. There's a text to me number on there. I don't, we don't have, I don't have it here, but they got it on the screen, right? You got the text up there? Okay, praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Now, that seed, I tell you to do what God tell you to do. And you get that promptness to do what he tells you. I don't only ask you to do what God Almighty tells you to do. Not what, not what the enemy tells you. See, if God tells you a high figure, and you hear the second figure, the first figure was God. And when he does that, he has a purpose in doing that. Real purpose in doing it. Amen. I don't believe in pressure giving. I don't believe in that. The Bible said God wants a cheerful giver. He wants you to do it cheerfully. But the Bible said, see, if you, the Bible said, if you, you, you've been sown spiritual food, you should give up your carnal things to Almighty God. That's what the Bible said. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Now, I want you to raise your offerings before the Lord. And I can repeat it after me. Say, Father God, I thank you for the seed time and harvest principle. For it is for kingdom building that your covenant may be established in the earth. Lord Jesus, my high priest, I ask you to present these tithes and orphans an act of love to what Jesus has done for me. I give you glory and honor and praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Seed, go and grow. We'll see you real soon. Now we love you. Correspond to us. We love you. We're here for you. We're not here to tell you things that's going to tickle your ears. We're here to tell you things that's going to change your life. And we want you to know we love you so very much. And God loves you. Now unto him is able to keep you from falling. And present you faultless. Go in peace. In Jesus name. Amen. Praise God.